New York City, the Big Apple, and the epicenter of American fashion. In this episode of Video Fashion Style, we look at designers who channel the spirit of the U.S. through their brands and explore the art of American fashion. Ralph Lauren defines the American dream with his world-famous lifestyle brand, while Michael Kors imbues his runway with a melting pot of references. I jokingly call the collection American Pie, but it's really all about optimism. New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art celebrates American women. Then, step into the video fashion archives for the launch of Calvin Klein's iconic jeans. Tommy Hilfiger brings high fashion to the football field. He is so American and the show being sort of a Super Bowl feeling with a jumbotron really just kind of transported you. Pierre Moss examines the influence of black culture in the U.S. This collection is the third part in the thesis and each part is all about reversing the ratio of black people in popular American space. Plus, grab a front row seat at memorable New York Fashion Week shows from Tory Burch, Mark Jacobs, and Brandon Maxwell. From iconic brands to inventive spirits, find out why New York is a capital of fashion, next on Video Fashion Style. For more than 50 years, Ralph Lauren has been meticulously creating a brand that has come to symbolize American elegance. It's about not the kind of clothes that you only wear once in your life. It's about clothes that you live in and enjoy. They become your favorites and that you have them in your closet and you don't ever want to get rid of them. That's the kind of clothes that I design. He is the American dream. He started making ties and ends up with an empire. Ralph Lauren has really truly personified what's possible in America. He's kind of created an American dream through his clothing and through his all of his designs for home and a whole lifestyle. Uh, he's short. He's very short. You're short. And short people, it's tough for us to find, you know, I can wear his suit. I don't know, but you know what I mean. So are you, you wearing Ralph now? Yes, yes. And I didn't have to shorten it. He has shaped the way people dress and live. Whether it's the polo grounds of the Hamptons or the sandy trails of Santa Fe, Lauren's true talent lies in crafting a desire for a lifestyle and selling the wardrobe to match. Ralph Lauren is a master at branding. He created a world everybody wanted to go into. I started doing menswear, and then I started to do women's wear, and then I started to do children, and then I started to do home, and then I started to do sport, and then I opened stores. Today, Ralph Lauren's vision of the American dream has worldwide impact. In the 21st century, Lauren's multi-billion dollar empire continues to grow due to his iconic aesthetic, making him a global fashion superpower. I think a good designer is an individual. He, uh, he doesn't want to look like anybody else. My job is not to look at what they're doing in Europe or what they're doing here. I've got to do what Ralph Lauren is. I think you're here to make a statement as to who you are. I jokingly call the collection American Pie, but it's really all about optimism. You know, America, here we are. This is the land where sportswear was born. You know, the 40s, during World War II, we saw that women here in the States, they ran the factories while the guys were overseas, and they were powerful and romantic at the same time. So it's a very patriotic collection. I am a patriotic kind of guy. And it is looking at the classic pieces and, and twisting them and subverting them. Stars and stripes, yes, but maybe in a bit of a subverted way.
it's looking at beautifully tailored jackets and coats. A lot of them are very nipped in the waist, stronger in the shoulder. Yes, I'm wearing Michael. And I love it, it's kind of fun to wear a suit. I was thinking about it the other day, I was like, I haven't worn a suit out to like a red carpet thing in a while, it's kind of nice. Michael, I love Michael, he's just a lovely, lovely man and great, I mean, I get to wear this, right? <laughs>
American attitude to all of her sportswear. Amazing shoes, amazing handbags. It's really fun. I'm, I love print and I love pattern and embroideries and embellishments. So it was really fun to just try to mix it all together and make it work. I'm taking um, a, a more basic and sort of simple fabrics like a tie-dye and then making it into a structured dress and things like that and then embellishing it. A lot of knit dressing, we did long to the floor dresses and we took a polo shirt and turned it into an evening dress and I thought that was sort of a fun dichotomy. You know, I think anyone that you can go across America can tell you that they know who Tori Burch is, have a bag, have a pair of shoes, you know, is aware of her. And I think that's a really great thing to build a brand like she has in such a short amount of time. It's really such a wonder in today's industry. In a dark cavernous space on Manhattan's Upper East Side, a single spotlight signals the entrance of legendary dancer and choreographer Carol Armitage. And so the Marc Jacobs Fall 2020 show begins, with models emerging en masse from the darkness, each one a more unique character than the last. The show choreographed by Armitage, was a celebration of individuality. Jacobs referenced New York's fashion past. As his inspiration for the season, Jacobs cited his memory of a disappearing New York. To quote the designer's show notes, a New York that is forever mythical and chic, with its beauty, promise, sparkle, and grit. In all of its extravagance and nostalgia, the show was a celebration of individuality and a testimony to the expressive power of clothing. The starting point for this season, actually, I went on um, very early. I went on a trip to Marfa with my fiance, and, and my grandmother had passed away, so we were, you know, going back and forth to Texas. And again, I'm not super thematic. I um, just went in every single day and sort of tried new things. You know, I was home a lot this time in Texas, and I was, you know, cleaning out my grandmother's house and being around my family and my friends. And I was really sort of looking at the things that I had loved growing up, whether it was that sort of classic Texan denim with my dad's skull can imprint on the back, or the, you know, the white shirts and sort of my grandmother's lipstick red. And, you know, those are the things that I, I really started with in the very beginning. And as I progressed, I sort of saw things coming together. And I think someone before was saying it very, it was very sort of, I guess, all American. And I wanted it to feel that way because I am, I think, very American. And, and that's how I felt this time. My life was in such a happy place, so I was making this. So I came to work every day just sort of open to anything, which I don't think was the case in the previous four. I think I was sort of put my own self in a box. And this time I was like, yeah, try it. It might work. You never know. Obviously we did denim this season. Denim is so much harder than you would even imagine. It's so hard, uh, but I really enjoyed it. Obviously we did a leopard jacquard, which is here. Um, jacquard is just a classic fabric that I've always loved and leopard is my favorite color other than black. So we wanted to translate that into colors that have been you know, classic for us, whether it's sort of the pale petal pink. And then obviously this time we added mint and pistachio because those are my two other favorite colors. Gigi's dress was Gazar, which is a classic fabric we always use. Um, yeah, the chiffon was an interesting thing for me. There were three pieces of chiffon and they took forever. And I really enjoyed that process. It is so delicate and it's like liquid. You know, I've always been somebody, I think, who's traditionally made very rigid, stiff things. And I don't know, my life felt very liquid and flowy this time. And I just wanted to try to figure out how to, you know, encapsulate that into a look. And yeah, I thought maybe as I was starting, I was like, maybe there's a lot of things in this collection. But you know what? I. I also did four collections before that didn't have a lot of things. So, I don't know, I tried it. It worked for me. I don't know if it worked for you or anyone who's reviewing it, but I'm like happy to go eat pizza after this. I'm feeling like super pumped about it. I 
always remember when I was at school, whether I was the most popular or not, I would always get into the car with one of my girlfriends after school and she would tell me how great I was. And that's where I really derived my self-worth was being around fantastic, strong, amazing women and them, you know, feeling like me, I feeling like they love me and I love them and that sort of like beautiful relationship. And that's how I approach this collection. It's like, I, I don't know what anyone's gonna say tomorrow, probably not gonna read a lot of it, but I will definitely keep with me in the morning that Carly Kloss gave me a kiss and said she loved it. And you know, the girls said that they wanna wear the dresses and that makes me happy. So I just need to like keep that with myself, you know? We are a safe space for you. And that's how I've always approached my creative process is I'm wanting to always be a space for women where they feel comfortable, they can be themselves no matter what they are or how the world sees them. Um, the clothes will change season after season, but that will always remain the same. I think the, the whole point of jeans is that almost anything that I design for women or for men that is to be worn above the waist, whether it's a cashmere sweater, or whether it's a leather or a suede shirt, or um, a silk, you know, a beautiful silk blouse for a woman, or a silk shirt for a man, any of those things can be worn with jeans, as well as any of the bottoms that I make for the various companies so that I thought, well, why not do it? You know, it really makes sense. And anything that makes sense, anything that seems right for, uh, for American people, I will get involved with. We launched the Mint, the Mains Gene, uh, and we had 14 of these terrific looking guys exercise and, uh, and you know, just fool around you know, in the jeans with uh, exercise equipment and everything. And they had a good time. And it was fun for me to do that. The secret of Klein's success is no secret at all. Sex sells. His jeans that were purely denim one day were golden the next. I think it's something that's a classic. I think it's something that will always be a part of American lifestyle. And uh, I, can, I see it continuing for years. And I very rarely say that about too many things. Tommy Hilfiger was really fun. I love just the classic preppy, but with kind of a modern twist takes that he does. Yeah, it's Tommy's 30th anniversary, and he is so American, and the show being sort of a Super Bowl feeling with a jumbotron really just kind of transported you. I love the way Tommy picks a theme and really plays it, and it's always got a sense of fun. He knows his brand, knows his identity, and then manages to infuse new energy into it every season. And that's the game. Team Tommy, we're like fans of Team Tommy. Well, I've always been inspired by sports particularly football, because I always wanted to be a football player, but I was never big enough. I love the equipment, I love the whole ambiance of sports, but I like sports mixed with luxe. And I think that people want to dress luxe, but they want it to be sporty. So this is what we've done, we've married the two. Every single item is going to have something athletic about it. Whether it's a trim, a stripe, a detail, every single item. And every single item is made with a luxury fabric. Great show for Tommy. Really a fantastic collection with such a young spirit. varsity jackets and little cheerleader outfits. 
beautiful pleated skirts. Yes, it was sporty and it was all those things without losing a beat of sophistication. The fur was not real, but it looked so luxe and it looked so well done. This is tailgating at its best. <laughs> It's a tailgating bonanza. I mean, all the looks are really fresh and fun in the spirit of Tommy Hilfiger. I love the way he mixes plaids and tweeds and prints. It's a touchdown, Tommy. I loved it. big show. It was fun. It was a party. That was the intent when you construct an entire football field inside an armory. <laughs> It's been closed since 1977. It opened up a few years ago. They've been doing like small concerts here. I wanted to bring attention to the space. This collection is the third part in the thesis, and each part is all about reversing the ratio of black people in popular American space. Sister Rosetta Tharp is a black woman who invented the sound that we now know as rock and roll and I think it was important to speak to her story and break down what she means for American pop culture. Emotive prints in the collection were created by exonerated artist Richard Phillips. Phillips spent over four decades in prison for a crime he didn't commit before he was finally cleared and released in 2018. Evidence was withheld to essentially derail him and cost him 50 years of his life. It's a tragic story. When I first heard it, I didn't have the means to reach out and actually do something meaningful with him, but it's something I always kept in the back of my mind because I remember him talking about him being a painter and how much he loved to paint and use watercolor. And as soon as I was able, we reached out and asked him to collaborate on this collection. And he was like, what do you want? I was like, I'm doing a collection around Sisters that I thought, but you can do whatever you want and I'll make it make sense. I'm thrilled to have a platform in which I can reach back into the community, bring people back to my community, bring awareness to people who are doing the work down on the ground and this is the most rewarding part of what I do and it's the reason why I do it. From the inventive to the commercial, the inclusive to the iconic, New York is truly a world capital of style.